Um, yeah, so my name is Brad Harris. Uh, I also work at Yahoo, like Reed. We work on different uh, different things in different areas of the company. But it was it was fun when we found out that uh, that there were multiple people of us at Yahoo, both using Happy and both in different ways. Um, I'm excited to speak with you guys today. Uh, I live in Denver, Colorado. I come out here once in a while, um, and this weather kind of sucks. But at least it's not cold and snowy. Um, there's some contact information about me. Um, but I've been working at Yahoo for a couple of years. Um, I work uh, I work mostly on on different publishing tools uh, for both internal partners of Yahoo and external partners, where uh, we have different services that we provide them, um, and that often means like creating some sort of an application for them to access and and see how that service is working for them and, and sort of manipulate and interact with it. Um, as we were building a few of these apps recently, um, they're often just these client-side applications um, where we're interacting with some different services uh, throughout the company, both old ones and new ones. Um, and, and, and as we, we built a couple of them, we found that we were like using the same services across multiple applications. And, and we tried a few different ways of like sharing code, sharing modules to, to try and keep keep that code that's communicating and sort of orchestrating that service communication, at least minimize and so we don't duplicate it. Um, we ran into challenges uh, with, with like sharing code and using modules for that. Um, and and we'll basically what we settled on was like pulling all that service orchestration and, and service aggregation into its own dedicated layer, this middle tier. Um, and that's mostly what I wanted to talk about today. There's been some awesome talks on like specific things with Happy, whether it's features, um, how you use a certain thing, um, or, or why why choose Happy. Um, so what I was what I was hoping to talk about was pick a couple things that we noticed once we once we pulled all this like service orchestration and aggregation out of our client side applications and gave it like a real home that was dedicated to it. Um, there were a few things that we noticed that we weren't expecting initially. Um, so I picked a couple of those, and there's a ton of things you could talk about, but I picked a couple that I'm hoping will be, will be useful for some people here um, to share those with you. Um, you know, aside from the inherent benefits that you get from like pulling all of that logic to, to sort of normalize that service communication out of your UI, there were these, these, these things that we, uh, I think you could have a whole talk just on that about like how pulling that out of your front end application and doing it somewhere else has all these benefits for your UI. But that'd be a completely different talk. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the benefits that we saw. Um, so, so, so when we build, when we build um, a lot of our applications, you know, Yahoo's been around for a while, so we're building on on some existing services. So I want to see by a raise of hands, how many people out there have built like an application, a website, something where uh, they got to build it on top of like pristine services, basically from the ground up, like they had no baggage. No legacy anything. All right. So we got like maybe a quarter of the people here. Um, and then how many people have had the opposite where they've built an application, website, something, and they've had to interact with at least like one legacy system? It looks like about everybody. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the reality of working for uh, any, any established company or company that has been around for a little while. Um, you're going to have to interact with some legacy services probably. Um, so I got a story. So we were working on this one, uh, th this piece of our application, this new UI, where we had this, um, this concept uh, or this thing that a user needed to interact with. They needed to create this thing and, uh, and uh, so, so we're coming up with like, what's the UI supposed to look with look like for that? And it was like dead simple. It's like we need to collect one piece of input for the user to create this thing. So, like that was settled. We knew what the UI was supposed to look like. We had to prompt the user for this thing, and then we started interacting with uh, with a team that was was handling these services for us for this particular uh, this particular data structure that we needed to to somehow persist. Um, so we talked with them and explained what it is that we needed, and they came back and said, "Yeah, we got something for that. We'll uh, let me send you the schema for that." So they sent us this thing, and we we're like, "Really? Like this thing? There's like 30 fields in it or something. We only need like one of them." And they're like, "Well, this is how you have to persist this thing because of things. Like you have to save it this way." Um, I'm 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 taking some uh, creative liberties a little bit with the story, but but the gist of it was like. 
we had a very simple thing that we needed we needed uh, from a UI perspective, and it all of a sudden got like very complicated once we needed to interact with these services. Um, so, so we were thinking like, you know, there's a lot of ways to handle that. You can um, build like a very simple sort of mapping layer in your UI to try and create an abstraction that makes sense for the UI, um, but then converts it to something like this or whatever it is that you need. Um, when you uh, when you talk to that service, and initially that's sort of a path that we took, um, but like as we had that like that mapping layer or that abstraction, we were trying to do it in the UI. Like it just feels fake because it's like right there next to it. Um, it didn't feel like like that was a real abstraction, um, and and it, as we got into it, it actually ended up being that we had like two different. UI concepts that both like needed to be persisted in the same data structure in slightly different ways, um, so that that's where like um, we found we found this benefit of like um, t creating these tailor fit abstractions for our UIs. So in one case, like we had two different data structures for our UIs um, that that were like exactly what we needed for the UI, no more, no less, um, and and creating those. You know those abstractions and putting them in this middle tier. Um, it had an interesting effect because, like, as soon as you have like a set of dedicated routes to something, um, you know, an actual model that represents it. Um, so a set of these resources dedicated to this abstraction, like, it becomes more real for some reason, um, and the UI can treat it that way. And it's not, it's you know, it's it's a it's a lot harder to sort of fudge it and just. Um, you know, let let the abstraction leak into what that big, huge thing was that that you really want to kind of hide from your UI. Um, so, but that doesn't come without overhead. Like as you create, you know, you want to create all these abstractions that are tailor fit for your UI. Um, there's overhead of like creating routes and then having to maintain those. Um, you know, you want to make sure that they're validated correctly. And I think that's where like some of the stuff that's been talked about earlier that Reed just talked down with Joy, like it makes it really easy and cheap to do a lot of that stuff. You can even, at the end of Reed's talk, he talked about sharing schemas. Um, you can share schemas so you avoid some of that duplication and some of that overhead to, to maintaining that stuff. Um, so that was one thing that, that we did that we found was really helpful that we weren't really anticipating that once we created this dedicated middle tier, we'd have a place to create these abstractions that you know didn't necessarily exist in some of the services we were calling, but um, but they became feasible for our front end, um, and that had some great great side effects. Um, the the other thing uh, that that we uh, we noticed, so as as we were like. Um, building up these these applications and talking to different services, um, like not all services are created equal. Like some of them, um, some of them, you know, use status codes for for how you can detect whether there was an error, whether it did what you wanted it to do. Um, some of them send you JSON, and, and it's like you know in a great format that you can look at some property. Some of them send you some string that maybe you have to like match patterns against, and some of them sometimes send you nothing, and that means it worked. Or sometimes they send you nothing for a different route, and that means it didn't work. Um, and these are all examples of like something that we have right now in these services that we've talked with that uh, that we've had to go through. Um, so, you know, for your UI, like if you have to normalize all that in the UI, it's not only like extra code, but it's like it just becomes a mess, and you have to maintain it. Um, it becomes very buggy. So, so it's an obvious thing to move to this middle tier. Um, and to normalize all those crazy services so that you have like one consistent output for for your UI. Um, uh, whoops, went too far. So, um, and ha Happy has modules that make that really easy. That you know we've talked about. Or I don't know if Boom's been mentioned, but Boom, like I used to hate status codes, and I built APIs in the past. In the past. Um, and I always hated like trying to figure out which like, which status code am I supposed to use? How can I make sure that like everybody's returning the right status code at the right time that we're consistent across our API? And um, Boom makes that pretty easy, um, like in English that people can understand when you're you know doing code reviews is pretty obvious like whether it's it's doing the right thing there. Um, but we had like we had these existing front end applications that were expecting a certain payload structure um, of JSON. Has anyone heard of JSON? Not a lot of people, just me. All right, um, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just like a JSON structure um, 
that's a convention for how to send messages back and forth with certain properties. So we had these UIs that were already built and sort of anticipating that structure. Um, so it was really easy to just tap into the hooks that Happy provides with, I think we use the on pre-response um, hook to, to take whatever that structure was and then take like a boom response and then convert it into something that, that was what our UIs were expecting, which was this thing. Um, and, uh, you know, converting like these 400 errors into, into failures and 500 into to, uh, to errors and then leaving some additional properties that we didn't have before that were helpful. Um, but not that I think that'll be super helpful for anyone else if you are using JSON, which it sounds like nobody else is out here. Um, it, it could be helpful, but it just, for me, it was, it was nice to see how easy it was to just tap into that hook, inspect the response we're getting back. It was really easy to see if it was an error because it has like an is boom property, um, and then handle it accordingly and, and convert it into what our UIs were expecting. Um, and it's something that if we migrate and change our UIs, like it's really easy to pull that out and just leave stuff as, as it is sort of with vanilla boom errors and their responses. So more than anything, what, what um, I'm hoping you get out of this, if you got something out of this other than a 10-minute nap, um, is that you'll consider like this middle tier of your application. And like that doesn't necessarily mean you have an actual like dedicated layer or dedicated service. Like that middle tier, if you're talking with services, is probably somewhere and it might even be in your UI code. It might be through like your UI code to your node server for your front end, like sprinkled through several places. But consider that. And if it's becoming like hard to consume and manage, like try to Try, you know, think of some of these things that, and consider moving it to, to a dedicated middle tier. One of the things that we found really helpful for, like as we hired new engineers, um, when it was all in one application where it was this one UI that was like, you know, all the UI code, the front end code, also talking to all the services, it was a lot to bite off and consume and sort of grok for, for new hires. But when you could like break that out into its own layer and then let people ease into it as, as they were starting to get everything, it became a lot easier to, to maintain. So give your, your middle tier the attention that it deserves. Um, it's probably somewhere in your application already. So look for ways that you can use some of these tools that, that the Happy ecosystem provides to try and give it that attention that it deserves. Make it something beautiful like that that you can manage and you can just eat it and, and enjoy it. Um, one of the things that I, I really appreciate about Happy is like the effort that, um, that's put in to, to making it very modular. It's not just one library. It's, it's a series of libraries um, that, you know, like Reed said, you might use Joy for something that has nothing to do with HTTP. So it's great that there's these, these suite of, of tools that are like heavily tested um, and sort of proven that, 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 and that they work well together, but you don't necessarily have to use them together. So as you sort of give your middle tier the attention it deserves, like some of the tools that Happy provides, whether you use Happy like as an HTTP server or not, there's probably something in that ecosystem that will be a benefit to you. And then to end, there's some cats and warm fuzzies because everybody likes cats. I'm not really a cat person, but I thought if I showed cats, you guys would like my talk and like me a little bit. Anyways, all right, thank you.